Among the many actions being taken in the current crisis that will be future history is the deployment of two extraordinary U.S. Naval non-commissioned vessels, USNS Mercy and USNS Comfort. These are essentially thousand-bed floating hospitals, and while they were designed to treat casualties of war, they have mostly been deployed for humanitarian purposes, and their deployment represents a long tradition that might go back all the way to antiquity. The history of hospital ships deserves to be remembered. The exact origin of hospital ships is not clear, but the ancient Athenian navy had a ship named Therapia, meaning therapy, sometime around the 5th century BC. If the ship, a trireme, had a medical purpose, the details of its use are lost to history. Designated hospital ships were common in use at least in the 17th century, when there were a number of ships of the British Royal Navy that saw duty as floating hospitals, although those duties were often temporary. From the mid-1660s to the 1690s, the Royal Navy maintained two hospital ships at a time, which received six sailors from other vessels. These were usually either hired merchant vessels or modified older small warships. Conditions aboard the vessels, however, may not have been ideal, and crews complained that the hospital ships were actually given poorer rations than other vessels. An interesting example was HMS Jersey, which, after being used as a hospital ship by the Royal Navy, was converted to a prison ship used to house American prisoners during the Revolutionary War. Conditions aboard Jersey were notoriously foul. One of the many interesting ships to be used for hospital duty was the USS Intrepid, which played a critical role in the 1801 to 1805 First Barbary War between the United States and the North African Barbary States. Originally built by the French for Napoleon's 1798 Egyptian campaign, the two-masted catch had been sold to the Barbary state of Tripoli, where it participated in the capture of the frigate USS Philadelphia, which had run aground on a reef in 1803. The boat, then called the Mastico, was in turn captured by the schooner USS Enterprise in December of that year. Renamed USS Intrepid, the boat was used to infiltrate Tripoli Harbor in order to set fire to and sink the captured Philadelphia before it could be used by Tripoli. Intrepid then served as a hospital ship by the U.S. Navy, but in 1804 returned to Tripoli, where she was loaded with powder and outfitted as a fire ship. The attempt was to again infiltrate the harbor, and this time set the ship to explode and damage the Tripolitan fleet. The former hospital ship was discovered before she could reach her position and exploded, doing little damage in the harbor but killing her 13-person crew. Hospital ships were not always military in purpose, with an interesting example being HMS Dreadnought. While the name usually conjures images of the 1906 ship that revolutionized battleship construction, the 98-gun, second-rate ship HMS Dreadnought that was launched in 1801, after serving in the Battle of Trafalgar, was made into a quarantine ship in 1827. The ship was used as a floating hospital to house people showing signs of illness, trying to enter Great Britain. In 1831, the ship was taken over by the Seamen's Hospital Society to act as a floating hospital to care for ex-members of the British merchant fleet. The name Dreadnought became so associated with the Seamen's Hospital that when the original ship was broken up in 1857 and replaced as a hospital by the former 120-gun HMS Caledonia, Caledonia was renamed Dreadnought. When the Society took over a former naval hospital at Greenwich in 1870, care was transferred from the ship, but the hospital was renamed Seamen's Dreadnought Hospital. A vestige of the old hospital ship remains as the dreadnought unit of St. Thomas's Hospital in Lambeth, which still provides special services to seamen and their families. An early example in the United States was the ship Florence Nightingale. The ship was used to quarantine passengers entering New York Harbor to help control the spread of yellow fever. Such patients had been held in a marine hospital on Staten Island, but island residents rebelled in 1858 and burned the hospital. In response, New York port officials acquired and converted a steamer to act as a quarantine hospital, renaming it Florence Nightingale. While an October 1859 article in the New York Times praised the vessel as offering a satisfactory solution to the controversy over where to quarantine sick people entering the harbor, the paper suggested a much larger vessel would be needed. Instead of a larger vessel, however, port officials used sand dredged from the harbor to create two artificial islands to house hospitals, Swinburne Island and Hoffman Island. During the U.S. Civil War, the Federal Army and Navy, as well as various state and private organizations, operated hospital ships. Many of these ships were either operated by or outfitted by the little-remembered private United States Sanitary Commission. Most commonly, hospital ships during the Civil War era were designed to carry wounded troops upriver to hospitals rather than to serve as permanent floating hospitals. 
the USSC operated 16 ships to transport wounded during the Peninsular Campaign under the Hospital Transit Commission. But there were more permanent floating hospitals during the war, notably the USS Red Rover. A steamship that started its service with the Confederacy but was captured by the Federal Navy in 1862. Converted to a hospital ship by the Western Sanitary Commission, Red Rover served along the Mississippi as a floating hospital for people with infectious disease. The boat was representative of the improvement in floating hospitals of the era, much of that derived from international experience in places such as the war in the Crimea. Red Rover was equipped with an operating room, a galley with separate kitchen facilities for the patients, a steam boiler for laundry purposes, as well as an elevator, numerous bathrooms, nine water closets, and gauze window blinds. The boat admitted over 2,400 patients during the war. Perhaps the most famous hospital ship of the U.S. Civil War was the steamer Star of the West. On January 9, 1861, the 1,172-ton steamship was attempting to bring supplies to Union troops garrisoning Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor when the vessel was fired upon by a battery manned by cadets of the Citadel Academy. Those shots are considered by historians to be the first shots of the U.S. Civil War. The steamer was captured by the Confederacy near Galveston, Texas in 1861 while moving federal troops and operated by the Confederacy as a hospital ship. The ship was later deliberately sunk in the Tallahatchie River to block Union naval vessels during the Vicksburg Campaign. Hospital ships continued to develop and were used to support troops during the Spanish-American War, the Second Anglo-Boer War, and the Boxer Rebellion. The USS Relief, used during the Spanish-American War, for example, included a state-of-the-art X-ray machine. After the 1907 Hague Convention, it became illegal to attack hospital ships that were clearly marked, but there was still danger. Some, such as HMHS Britannic, the sister ship of the Titanic, were struck by mines. Others were attacked under the argument that they were not following the rules of the Hague Convention. The Germans notably complained that Allies were using hospital ships to transport fit troops to war and eventually ordered its U-boats to attack hospital ships as part of unrestricted submarine warfare. In one shocking example, in June of 1918, the Canadian hospital ship HMAS Landover Castle was torpedoed by the German U-boat SMU-86 off the coast of Ireland. The captain of the submarine then tried to hide the evidence by chasing down and machine-gunning the survivors, including female nurses, in their lifeboats. 234 doctors, nurses, members of the Canadian Army Medical Corps, soldiers and seamen died in the attacks. But one lifeboat with 24 people managed to survive to tell the story. After the war, the captain of the U-86 was tried for war crimes, but he managed to escape punishment by escaping to the free city of Danzig and avoiding extradition. In 1917, two steamships that had been requisitioned and used as troop transports by the U.S. Army were transferred to the Navy and outfitted as hospital ships. Considered sister ships, but not of the same class, they were renamed USS Mercy and USS Comfort. The two were outfitted as state-of-the-art hospital ships and were the first in the U.S. Navy service to include female nurses among their crew. They brought wounded men, including victims of gas attack and the 1918 influenza, from Europe back to the United States. Between the two, they transported 3,880 wounded and sick American troops home from the war in Europe. Mercy continued as a hospital ship with the Navy until she was sold off in 1934. Although returned to private service after the First World War, Comfort was commissioned into the Army as a hospital ship during the Second World War, operating under the name USAHS, or U.S. Army Hospital Ship, Shamrock, throughout the war. It was also in 1917 that the United States laid the keel of its first naval ship designed from the keel up as a hospital ship. The ship was the third U.S. Navy ship named Relief. Commissioned in 1920, the USS Relief had a bed capacity of 550 patients and was one of the most modern hospital ships of its time. The ship served in both the Atlantic and Pacific during the Second World War, transporting and treating wounded, providing medical supplies to the fleet, and deploying field hospitals. USS Relief evacuated 2,000 wounded troops from the Battle of Okinawa, moving the casualties to hospitals on Guam and Saipan. Relief also evacuated prisoners who had been freed from Japanese prisoner of war camps in China, many of them survivors of the Bataan Death March. Over the course of the war, Relief survived sea mines and air attack, evacuated some 10,000 wounded and sick fighting men from nearly every major Pacific battle, and sailed a distance equivalent of four times around the Earth. For her service, Relief earned five battle stars. During the Second World War, the U.S. Army operated 29 hospital ships, and the Navy operated 15. Sailing as a hospital ship continued to be a risk during the Second World War. Comfort was struck by a kamikaze aircraft off Okinawa in 1945. 
The plane crashed through three decks, exploded inside a crowded surgery, killing 24 and wounding 48. It was a small taste of the risk involved. As many as 7,000 people died when German warplanes sank the Soviet hospital ship Armenia when it was fleeing German advances in the Crimea in November of 1941, making it one of the deadliest maritime disasters in history. The ship had been overcrowded with wounded soldiers and refugees, and the exact number on board was never determined. After being struck by an aerial torpedo, the ship sank. In just four minutes, there were only eight survivors of the attack. The ship was sunk despite clearly displaying red crosses, marking it as a hospital ship, but some argue it was a legitimate target under the Hague Convention, as it was being escorted by military vessels and had its own anti-aircraft armament. In May 1943, the Australian hospital ship AHS Centaur was sunk, apparently by a torpedo from a Japanese submarine, for a loss of 268 of the 332 medical and civilian personnel aboard. While the sinking was a war crime, the Japanese Navy never admitted culpability and has never been determined which submarine was responsible. In April 1945, the Japanese ship Awamaru, sailing as a Red Cross ship delivering supplies to U.S. prisoners of war, was sunk by the submarine USS Queenfish. The U.S. submarine had apparently mistaken the Awamaru for a destroyer. The ship was in heavy fog. The Awamaru was not operating its foghorn as required, and the ship had deviated from its reported route to avoid a minefield. 2,003 people, merchant marine officers, military personnel, diplomats, and civilians that were being taken from Singapore to Japan were killed. The commanding officer of the Queenfish was convicted of negligence in a court-martial. Hospital ships continued to serve after the war. The U.S. Haven-class hospital ship USS Repose, for example, was commissioned in May of 1945 and served in the Pacific Theater. The ship was recommissioned during the Korean War, evacuating casualties from Korea to Japanese ports. The ship was commissioned again during the Vietnam War, where it treated over 9,000 battle casualties and 24,000 inpatients, including sailors injured in the 1967 USS Forrestal Fire. The Repose's sister ship, USS Sanctuary, launched in June 1945 and decommissioned in August of 1946, was also reactivated for the Vietnam conflict, where the ship earned 11 battle stars. When Sanctuary was decommissioned again in 1975, the U.S. Navy had no active hospital ships remaining. In 1986, the United States Navy commissioned a new class of hospital ships, the Mercy-class vessels USNS Mercy and USNS Comfort. Built from converted San Clemente-class oil tankers, the Mercy and Comfort are the third largest ships in the United States Navy, behind only the Nimitz and Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers, and are longer than only a handful of other warships on Earth. Each ship is a fully equipped hospital with 12 operating rooms and 1,000 beds. Designed to treat battle casualties, the ships served in the Persian Gulf and Iraq wars, as well as numerous humanitarian missions such as tsunami relief in Southeast Asia in 2004, earthquake response in Haiti in 2010, the annual U.S. Pacific Partnership, as well as disaster relief in the United States, including the World Trade Center bombing in 2001 and Hurricane Katrina in 2005. As hospital ships under the Hague Convention, the Mercy and Comfort can only carry defensive weapons, and they cannot transport military personnel who have combat designations. They're mostly crewed by civilian members of the Military Sea Lift Command. They usually operate in reduced status with skeleton crews, but are designed such that they are supposed to be able to deploy with a full complement of some 1,200 military medical personnel with just five days' notice. The ships have been activated as part of the U.S. response to the 2020 coronavirus outbreak. The Mercy is expected to deploy to Los Angeles and the Comfort to New York City. They're not designed to control infectious outbreak, and so they won't be treating coronavirus patients, but rather will treat non-coronavirus patients in order to relieve stress on local hospitals. And in that service, they will be following a long tradition of providing both mercy and comfort to both military and civilians.